And now we are live. So let's all cool. press one. Bam. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back. So welcome to Indy 3, if you guys are new here. It's day two of uh, five, six, or seven. We haven't totally decided on the end. It's actually seven. We've got a whole week here. Um, and I'm really excited to show all of the indie games that we possibly can. If you've been here yesterday or at all uh, during this afternoon, um, then you'd know that we uh, show a whole lot of indie trailers. And so right now we are going to jump into another indie trailer showcase. We're going to showcase a whole bunch of indie trailers uh, and talk about them. And in call right now we have Diabetes. Howdy. Beautiful voice right there. <laughs> every time every time you say hi, uh, TJ flexes. <laughs> every flexes. single time. He just hi. is like, I, need to, I feel great about this. I have officially organized a show um he feels awesome i have gotten in with let's play <laughs> you've <laughs> got an in <laughs> got an in you have me here what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> you had me here <laughs> what are you talking about um so i'm ready to show you some games are you ready diabetes i am set i'm pumped for some indie stuff yeah we're gonna look at some amazing beautiful surprising uh and hopefully interesting from a wide variety of people places identities um, just the whole gamut. So let's just get started. Do you want to hit me up for this first one? Uh, so the first game that we're looking at, and you can see the stream, right, Beatus? I can. Awesome. You'll only be like two or three seconds behind. It's glorious on Hitbox. It is. It's weird watching you talk, though, because it's like I'm watching a badly dubbed kung fu movie. <laughs> well, that's actually how I talk. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so this first one is Aru's Awakening by Luminox Games. And this is like all I've got is the website. And I want to show the website first before I even show the trailer because uh, I've been kind of getting into showing the websites. They look so cool. I don't want to waste that. But uh, let's see what let's see what Luminox has for us. It might help if I put on sound. Let me try this again. I could provide the sound myself if you'd like. That was our first video? Are you kidding me? Nice. That was Aris's Awakening. That was an action platformer with this cursor interface and all of these parts, these dynamic parts where you are, uh, it seemed like you were like throwing an orb to then teleport yourself to that orb. That was wicked. What were you thinking about when you were watching that, Beatus? I was really intrigued by it as people who may or may not watch my let's plays know uh i'm a big fan of old platforming games old and new so color me intrigued and very pretty too a very pretty platformer gorgeous platformer yeah all of that unlike some of our other indie 3 trailers all in in uh in engine not pre-rendered cutscenes. <laughs> that's been a weird overlap uh in this whole thing but no they were showing it to you live and it looked amazing. It was really cool. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any more details. Uh, there's a demo that you can download right now at luminoxgames.com. And uh, they also have pre-orders open over the Humble store. They have a Humble widget ready. Um, so it seems like it's probably going to be a uh, PC and Mac and Linux game, I would assume. So it has been greenlit, so to speak? I'm not sure if it's been greenlit. There's nothing about Steam on the main page. Ah, OK. Uh, or if they're even going up that avenue. But it's definitely got stuff on the Humble store. And so that looked really cool. And that was really exciting. Agreed. So I've got another game. And it also has a really cool Itch.io site. Uh, props to Itch.io, by the way. 
they let you kind of curate a very cool uh, scene in different kinds of ways. So this is Virus Jiggle and Jiver. Uh, sorry, Virus Jiggle and Fever. And it has, uh, it has a lot of interesting stuff that it's doing. This is by Dev Fluid. So Dev Fluid at it, uh, devfluid.itch.io. So that's virus jiggling fever. <laughs> there was a million things going on. Beatus, hit me up. What did you see? Lots of influences, man. Right? So we got some Dr. Mario. You got your Pong slash Breakout. Yep. Your um, other games I can't think of with <laughs> the Bejeweled and stuff like that. There was some Game & Watch going on. Like really yeah. old school. Uh, there was that, that, that idea where it's like, all right, you've got this dynamic system, the, ba the ball's bouncing all over the place, uh, but you're only allowed to move your character into four slots, the different rows, right? So you're super limited with where you can put the paddle to do this whole Pong thing. And then the ball just like keeps growing and getting bigger. That was really cool. whole time you're trying to not get overwhelmed by the viruses. So Great. I'm usually frustrated with puzzle games because I'm just not very good at them, but I am puzzled by my enthusiasm for this. I don't, I don't know where you're getting a puzzle from, though. <laughs> oh, well. Sorry, uh, polite laughter. <laughs> yes. No, uh, virus jiggling... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do that every time. Virus jiggling fever uh, is... Uh, that looked like it was going to be... It's on itch.io right now, and it is on uh, Google Play, the Windows Store, uh, so all of your mobile devices also can access it, which is awesome. Oh, sweet. i look that up. Mm -hmm. And I still I don't have any way to actually get these games into the chat itself, but that would be amazing if people could help with that. Um, but it's okay. So this next one that I've got, I don't have a video for it, but there's so much about it that looks so exciting um, from just the main page itself. And so I want to show this page off. This is Studio Loon, or Studio Lune. It's kind of broken in half, so I'm not sure. Uh, but it just starts with this stark picture of an atom breaking or a planet being cut into Ooh. the galaxy. And this is their current project. It's titled Afterlife. You sure it's not like an orange or a fruit? It could be a fruit. This is actually just a fruit ninja clone. So I, we could get hyped about that too. Uh, so Afterlife is the first working title of our first project. A story about death, forgiveness, and the end of all things. So definitely with this Adam metaphor, uh, end of the world has arrived. It's your job to see it through. You are the angel of death, Atzrael, sent with a, within a human host to carry out your final task, the end of all things. The apocalypse doesn't go accordingly to plan. A group of humans manage to avoid annoil total annihilation. Your soul is separated and distributed among the humans. Your body imprisoned and bound by ancient words. You escape these bounds after some time, but will you seek revenge or heal yourself? There are multiple tiers to this story. Oh, thank you for that. Someone helped me kind of find that F11 key that does full screen stuff. Um, so we got Action Platformer. And Afterlife has players moving in. So it's going to kind of be like uh, Prince of Persia then, I'm assuming. Got this picture here. Sounds like it, yeah. Got this picture of actually Prince of Persia guy looking over uh, some cool looking water. Man, that fruit looks good. With the fruit in the background. The fruit is the, the planet, actually, outside in space. 
And so you've got a team of developers all sketched in. And another moody protagonist with a long blade. Uh, just kind of standing, uh, about to fall over, actually. He's got a Charlie horse, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. I gotta sit down. Um... So yeah, yeah, that's what I've got for uh, Studio Lune brought us that, which is so cool. Um, and why does sound really enthusiastic reading that very dark backstory behind the game? Oh yeah, of course, of course. You got it. You, well, you know, you'll it makes me yourself. sound like the end of the world is a happy occasion. Yeah, just avoiding. We avoided total annihilation. Our body was in prison, bound by ancient words. I don't know if I'll seek revenge or heal myself, but I'm gonna have fun. <laughs> Oh, uh, I also, uh, the devs wanted us to take a big point, and this is very clear within the stories, um, but there's a lot of metaphors to, uh, oh, sorry, I'm getting messages from everyone. Um, one, one moment, can I? Sorry, uh. They want me to keep pressing F11. Thank you. Just keep reminding me. I thought I was going to move dabs, but... Um, so this game actually takes a lot of inspiration from the Muslim faith. And it obviously in the uh, Angel of Death, Atzrael, um, but the uh, kind of ways that they're taking it makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. Um, especially with the metaphor of... Um, where is it? Where is it? You're sent as a human... Uh, the Angel of Death is in a human host... And then, oh, your soul is separated and distributed among the humans. That's the part I think that actually interests me the most. So you got to get your soul back? I think, but like you're also somehow disembodied from your own soul, and I don't know how that works. That's like a so, so why would your body need to be imprisoned if your soul is somewhere else? What's your body doing? Exactly. Like, <laughs> it's just on the golf course, taking putting back nine. Indie golf. Indie golf. PGA Tour. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So there's some really cool stuff in there, and I cannot wait to see what uh, Studio Lune puts out for that. So let's get a trailer. This is a trailer for Speedway Heroes 4. Oh, this is four players. Sorry. Speedway Heroes, four players with items. Is there no sound? Come on, baby. I am not hearing sound. All right, we'll have to ad lib it. Looks like it doesn't have any sound, so... Uh, obviously, we've got a racing game, combat racing game with jumps and stuff, and shortcuts! <laughs> okay, okay. We've got some uh, a lot of different cool things going on. Have you ever played the game Trackmania? I have not, but I've seen some footage of it. I'm a little familiar. It kind of looks like there's a lot of inspiration here with that. Like, someone wanted to make that kind of Trackmania feel... You see that, yeah. Or maybe that, like, Hot Wheels stuff, where it's like, I want to make a track of Hot Wheels, and <laughs> there's just, at, by the end of it, you've just got, like, cars flying all over the place, and you've hit your brother in and, the eye with a... And could the usage of items to impede racers perhaps be inspired by something else? Um, yeah, like uh, Mortal Kombat, I think. Yeah, there you go, Mortal Kombat. I'm interested, uh, especially because they're doing some four-player stuff. Which uh, is kind of cool because uh, now there's the platforms to be able to do that easily through uh, a lot of game making tools. I think Game Maker itself also might have some updated stuff for doing multiplayer content. Hmm. It's easy for everyone to play together. So where did the legit points come into the equation? Legit points in that true. Yeah, when you made some turns that said like eighty-seven percent legit. Oh, that's right. So were you like adequately fast and furious during that spin, perhaps? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, overlay stuff that's counting. I'm actually quite curious about where it's going with it. Um, it looks like you've got your 
on the left side, um, your position within the track is gauged by um, where you're at on the left side of the screen. And there's some kind of trick part to it. I, I see turd burglar is catching up very quickly. <laughs> yeah, that is one of them, isn't it? He's an infamous racer, that turd burglar. Turd burglar versus the antithesis hero. So the number on the roof is your miles per hour? I think so. Yeah. The turd burglar cam is OP. No one wants to get near the turd burglar car. I mean, you know what he has in there. You know what he stole. It's in his he trunk and it stinks. He might not be a good burglar. That would be an empty car then. Move it on. <laughs> TJ's like, just move on. Uh, just go. Pyrodactyl. Pyrodactyl Games has <laughs> a game called Unrest. So you're going to play as ordinary people, struggling for food, safety, freedom, and a chance at peace. Explore an ancient city and use conversation, violence, or both to achieve your goals. Unrest is an RPG adventure game that adapts to death, failure, and the choices you make. It's also worth mentioning that um, one of the developers of this game, Arvind Yadav, is going to be doing a panel tomorrow on designing That's RPGs right. without combat. That's right. Arvind's got the hookup with uh, another... That was the panel without combat, right? That's, That's correct. Sweet. Do you remember what time that is? Is it a morning or an evening one it's it's very early because they're stationed in another area i believe it's scheduled 11 pst cool right that's our early bird one yeah that's cool that we're able to get all that content spread out and get voices from everywhere so let's hit this trailer let's do it oh thank you for telling me to unmute tj thank you yeah, YouTube is just really messing with me today. YouTube is like that sometimes. Wow, it's already coming out on Steam. Awesome. But wait, there's more. There's a whole nother video. Oops, did I, did I make an oopsie? Nah, you didn't make an oopsie at all, TJ. Okay, cool. Okay, now I'm I'm getting it with the second trailer. Everything kind of comes together right there. I liked those both together. Um, sir, but beat us, please. What did you see in there? Well, if in the first trailer I was thinking, okay, it's like medieval depressing Sims. Mm -hmm. All right, that's pretty cool. And I, I dug a lot of the architecture, art design of the buildings and such. I thought it looked very neat. Mm -hmm. You had some, uh, maybe some quest elements put in there, perhaps? It looked from... like it. Uh, yeah. The cool thing that they're exploring is uh, because they're kind of getting away from having to work within combat style mechanics, uh, a lot of the systems, it looked like, had to do directly dealing with people. Uh, so, like, you had a lot of meters uh, that involved your relationships with other people um, and yourself. Uh, and that's a very 
that's a very cool way to look at uh, just how we engage with other people within play systems, right? Mm -hmm. um, this For game sure. is uh, this game is also from what I remember from Virendar Jubal, who's also going to be on a panel mm -hmm. in the next couple of days. That this game is about um, forced marriage, basically like predestined mm -hmm. marriage, because um, that's a thing that still goes on in India today. Mm -hmm. So the developer wanted to focus on that particularly. Yep. It, I'm really excited to see uh, how they involve those kinds of systems because it's a very uh, if I understand, it's a very mercantilist system, and so it works well within a lot of these older RPG styles, where you're uh, where you're trading uh, usually money, uh, but also other goods uh, in that kind of Sims-like way, like you were talking about, Beatus. Yeah, yeah. You need to get your games and capitalism panel folks back on. We can get them back in here. <laughs> we can go. They want to make more panels, and then they'll branch off and make panels on exactly. panels. Just fractal. I like the, um, I like yeah. the music too. In the trailer. The music is so soft. Doug, that very mysterious. Yeah. No, it, it really set that tone. So, uh, again, that's Unrest by Pyrodactyl Games. And you can, uh, it looks like you can pre-order it. And you can buy it. Oh, there we go. We got 15 bucks. Perfect. Look at that. You can go support Pyrodactyl Games and all of the stuff they're doing right now and get DRM-free version of the game. Uh, it Ooh. can also get the soundtrack, and there's a special edition, which I don't even know what would be in the special edition. Um, but loads. Even more plagues. <laughs> Advanced plagues. Um, Somebody at the next house over seemed to like that. <laughs> yeah, TJ, TJ enjoyed it. Uh, um, I, was, I was reacting. So when you said unrest adapts to death... Did you mean my death as the player character's death? Unrest adapts to both scenarios. If you are reading this from the afterlife, we need more testers like you. <laughs> well done. Well done. So if we got any dead people in the house, you know, get a, give, them, give them a message. You know, hey, man, we have like 800 new. people in chat, so there's got to be like one or two of them. I mean, statistics say, right? Okay. This is uh, even the ocean. Which is made of two games, The Ocean and Even, and I'm Sean. Oh, Sorry about Sean, that. And I'm Repeat. I'm co designer, programmer, and composer for the game Even the Ocean. Which is made of two games, The Ocean and Even, and I'm showing gameplay from The Ocean right now. Um, in an area that's not available in the IndieK demo because it doesn't make sense without the whole context of the full game. But we'll show off the gameplay for the most part. Um, and so the idea of The Ocean is that this energy bar on the bottom is the only like a uh, central mechanic to the game in that the more of the dark energy or purple energy you have the faster you move to the left and right but the lower you jump and vice versa the more white energy you have the higher you can jump but the slower you move to the left and right now this makes the playstyle when moving through the areas feel very combat like in that you're making micro decisions into how to manage your energy to both uh, not die by filling the bar to either end but also on how to sort of, you know, decide how do I want to affect my movement in order to make it through the 2D space in the game. And so there's a, sort of a risk-reward system inherent to that in choosing which end of how far you want to fill up the energy bar, because if it's more towards the right or to the left, then it's more dangerous because you're more likely to die. But you get more of a benefit in the movement if your playstyle is towards wanting to have a more extreme horizontal speed or vertical speed, depending on the area. So, different sorts of motions can work in different ways in different areas in the ocean. Um, and we decided and realized that this sort of idea of different feeling motion can play thematically nicely into sort of humans and how we go about our everyday lives sort of making these micro decisions along these various spectrums of you know, how do we control our emotions, our interactions with other people, or with our work. And so the ocean is split into two um, types of areas, nature areas and gauntlet areas. And gauntlet areas is what I'm showing you right now, which is more of a linear gameplay style, traditional to most platformers, whereas nature areas, like I'll show you right now, are more, they're open-ended and they're filled with NPCs that are sort of built to 
uh, subtly express like re these relatable themes to the players that are um, exploring and playing through the game. And within these areas is also set, or not within, but overall there is a overarching narrative to the ocean that helps to keep players being able to relate to the game on a basic level. And of course there's more people to interpret if they want to go deeper. And there's also the even, which isn't shown, but also looks at the similar themes through a more like narrative contemporary day sort of game. And yeah, thanks for watching. All right. So that was Even the Ocean. It's a platforming game that uh, engages with the idea of a life bar as being the central mechanic. Um, and how you move it within the platformer is completely controlled by uh, how kind of how much life you have. But it's more like how much your balance is either on a dark plane or on a light plane. And then that affects how you jump and move, it sounds like. So uh, on one end, it looked like what we were working with was uh, you had, uh, they designed it really cleverly so that you wouldn't want to run into uh, purple traps because if you ran into purple traps while falling, it would make you uh, stay to the ground farther uh, and you wouldn't be able to maneuver through the rest of the traps before filling up your purple bar all the way. And vice versa, if you didn't get through the blue parts fast enough, uh, then it would continue to compound that problem of getting through the blue parts fast enough, and uh, you would die the other side too. Um, so really a game about finding balance in a very cleverly designed way within the constructs of a platforming game. Very mm -hmm. clever. What were you thinking about when you saw that? First thing I thought of was it kind of reminded me of blending 2D Metroid and the second game in the 3D Metroid series, uh, Metroid Prime Echoes, where you had the light world, dark yeah. world mechanic. And well, the light world, dark world mechanics are inherent in many other games as well. But it's an interesting blend of those two things, having the, um, having the yin and yang kind of interact directly in a single world instead of being two alternate places. So I mm -hmm. found that interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, another thing about it was that this is another game that, uh, is kind of negotiating violence like the last game was. Um, and I think Lana is in chat just blowing it up because that's what Lana the Gun does. Um, <laughs> there's a weird double entendre there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, it's another game where it's like uh, the only person who you're, you're only like hurting yourself or something in a weird way by maneuvering these passages. And so you're trying to get through the level uh, in the, best way possible for you to continue surviving um we didn't see uh any kind of fail state or end state so i'm kind of just assuming that if you fill your bar up too far you die um but it was really cool actually hearing because that was different from a trailer that was uh subtly different in that the creator was talking about the game itself um and yeah, not just the mechanics of it but also his uh sort of philosophy behind the game in the first place and kind of the what he was grounding it on that was interesting his dreams, his inspirations, his, all these other things. So, yeah, no, it gave a really clear view of what was going on in the game. And so that was it's, really awesome. It's also available for download on itch.io. Oh, thank you. Thank you, TJ. There's a, there's a demo up there, and I will repost it right now so you guys can thank see you. that. And if thank you, you. want to play it, go ahead that's and do it super it's right there for you. Yeah, so that was Even the Ocean. Oh, I also wanted to... Let's play all these games. <laughs> I, I wanted to point out there was, uh, at the very beginning of the video, they say there's the ocean and then there's the even. And I was like, that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> Just calling your world even. That's all about balance, right? Okay. Anyway. Uh, just cool devil wordplay things going on. Uh, Telepath Tactics is our next game. So let's get telepathic. No. Oh.
telepath tactics arriving this winter. So that's Sinister Designs telepath tactics. And uh, yeah, so they weren't even hiding it. They're like, yeah, we're straight up nerds. Uh, we are, thank you. Uh, we are Final Fantasy Tactics. We are Fire Emblem. Um, and that was, yeah, well put together. They were just like, let's show off all of the big explosions that we've got. Um, also worth noting that myself and Hunter Russell were also involved in this game as animators. Um, I no did way. a lot of unit animation, and he did a lot of special effects. Um, Craig Stern, the person who created this game, is a really fantastic person. Definitely, you should definitely check this game out for sure and support it. It was on Kickstarter before, and it did get pretty successfully funded. So, like, definitely, you know, look into it. Uh, give, give, give him money. That, okay? that telepath guy's rude. It just pulls him right into the lava. I'll say. That's messed up. That guy's like, oh, I'm going to come over and stab you with my, you know, physical artifact. And he's like, nope, nope. You're not even allowed to get that far. Do you typically see the combat from very close up? Or is it sort of like in Final Fantasy Tactics where you can take the more bird's eye view and see everything? Um, the game is constructed around a very large field. So you can see a lot of stuff that's going on around you at the same time. So okay, it cool. zooms in for these, like, epic shots. Oh, I see. We're pulling up a picture of it right now. That shows a good view of kind of everything going on, including some flying guys. Okay, there you go, yeah. Flying over hazards and obstacles. I like these different ways that the you can interact with the field by uh, blowing it up, or looks like you can form it, too. There's a lot of cool things going on there. So, uh, yeah, one of the interesting things I think that was really clever is that because uh, you're dealing with uh, combat type of uh, type of mechanics that usually involve having one person be next to the other person to attack them, uh, to call your entire game telepathy tactics uh, means that, huh? Oh, telepath tactics. Sorry. Uh, means that you don't have to be right next to them. Like, just by inherent design, by the very title of the game, that you're going to be doing a lot more uh, manipulating of where the objects are and where the little pieces are on the game board. Or manipulating where people are. Or just manipulating people. Absolutely agree. That's got some cool stuff in it. So, uh, oh, here we go. This was uh, Controis is another game, of course, because uh, they're all games in our hearts. Uh, sorry, but this is another game by, uh, is it Arthur Ward Jr.? Yeah. This was shown in Warp Panel. Warp Door. The Warp Door panel showed Controis, and it's by the same people who did Crush 2, which we showed yesterday. And they gave a whole bunch of keys out for it when we showed it off, which was so cool. Uh, and so this is Controis game. Let me see if... I thought there was a video attached to this. Maybe there's not. Maybe we'll just click the button and play it. <laughs> oh, it's just already going. Okay. Uh, I guess we're also now demoing stuff. I wasn't sure that we were going to do that, but help me out with this. I have my hands on my arrow keys. Yep. Module status online. So There's you can all play this with me, uh, Controis. I don't remember. I think it was an itch.io, wasn't it? I don't think they want me to. Okay, so this. you know you have a space drift module, right? Uh, how, I've been told this. How do I access this, sir? That part I missed. Oh God. But I don't think banging into the sun is correct. I I'm hoping it's a space bar. So I have to neutralize the disturbance. Very uh, Star Control esque, but with an indie slant. Do you sustain damage when you hit those walls? Yes, and other things too. How's that? Your disturbance? Oh, your hull. Okay, I covered up a little bit. Oh, right by the indie stuff. Whoa. Okay. Okay. I found. I started hitting all the buttons. 
A way to anger the sun god. I know. This is incorrect. The spinning relic here that I... Big fork. Okay, so you found your arrow missiles. Let me see. Maybe there's some other buttons I can press. Oh. So no does way. anything noticeable happen when you touch that rotating pitchfork with an arrow sticking out of it? Not that I could tell. I think I'm also kind of flying on my own here. I can slow down, but I can't necessarily stop. Wow, this guy's mad. Well, I mean, to be fair, you fired at the sun first. Y yeah, you're completely correct. <laughs> Warning, hull integrity compromised. Uh-oh. No, we can't go down like this. It's our first game. This is the first game we've shown on ED3. Warning, hull critical. Warning, hull failure imminent. Despite all these problems, there's not a whole lot of disturbance going on. Wait, 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 we so did con it. congrats for that. Proceed to extraction point. Okay, so shooting it was right. Okay, yeah, you're making it smaller. Okay. We did. We were supposed to shoot the sun god and anger it. Okay, so the disturbance meter was like a boss meter, boss life meter. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, focusing on the boss fight. There's no extra, like, nothing else in the way, really. Can you find the chat note that rotating beacon does so I can repeat what you said and make myself sound smart? Oh god, things are getting real. This guy's shooting two at once. Two sons at once. Uh, I can't shoot at them and stop moving at the same time. But I'm gonna try. Excellent. Warning, hell critical. Aw, oh, she said I was excellent. All disturbances She's just being nice. <laughs> You're a cadet. It's your first day. Okay, I made it out with 14 holes, and I'm gonna just get out of here, I think. Your ship has a lot of holes, I gotta say. Oh, it's cool to run into walls. Totally cool. Okay. So the rotating thing is actually the exit, which I missed before. Exit wasn't back where I started, was it? I have no I idea. I think it was. There may have been a wall blocking it off, or it was on the... That's right. The game told me where the exit was. I just am incompetent. Obviously. Oh, it shows at the beginning of the level, too. God, they want me to destroy disturbances and remember how to get out of here. All possible because of her work. This one is more dangerous than the rest. Exercise caution. Whoa! Just as an FYI, this is gonna be really hard. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> thanks, thanks, TJ. I heard that this one is more dangerous than the rest, so you should probably exercise some caution. I need to get. I mean, I, I mean, we don't make the rules here. We just follow them. I mean, that was just an idea I completely had on my own. No, nothing else happened that would cause you to think that at all. No, not at all. Get cardio. Excellent. Nah, I'm getting all too good at this game. Is cleared. Proceed to extraction point. That was um, the... Edible Toaster is telling you to use space drift, which is right click. Oh, that's right. We did the the funky the that one. Or RDP can be Thank you, Edible Toaster. This is your game, isn't it? Your I'm pretty yes, sure. He's on. He's on point right now. Because I remember Edible Toaster was uh, coming around when they were dropping keys the other day. God bless. God bless. The, the other. Thing. So you got two charges of a thing you can activate with the Y button. That was just the thing I knew. Me and Edible Toaster go way back. Yeah, it's no big deal. <laughs> yeah, I know a few things. I got some insider sources in the indie community. No big deal. Okay, so I think, yeah, that was the space bar that cleared all of the shots on field. And then I wasted it. Oh, he's saying you have to hold right click. Excellent. Oh, I can hold right click also? What? Oh, nice. Excellent. I've got some precision turning stuff I'm doing too with the left click. And look at all that hole you got left. You're, you're making it. 
but I get the feeling you could use some more data. Let's go find some more data. So this is data you're killing? Aww. It's hey, hey, let's not get Mega Man Legends involved in this, all right? Some this data is very disturbing. Whoa! These ships were never designed for this. PRX Combat Core was a last-minute addition. Oh, I can't shoot anymore. I'm just going to keep flying around. So just one of the Easter eggs I know about this game. Did you know the RX Combat Core was a last minute edition? I did not, actually. <laughs> Edible Toaster told me that one night. Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, that is such... You're confiding that in me? Wow. We're, we're, we're friends. We're friends. Good, good friends. Good pals. You always get friends with all the good devs. Hey, I can shoot again. Wow, this data is not fooling around. No kidding. Okay, I can't shoot again. This data bites. Excellent. <laughs> Appreciate yeah. the far off laughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So like you're embarrassed to laugh at that terrible joke and don't want anyone to hear you. <laughs> like, ha, 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 ha. I think, uh, I think they're taking away my shots. Oh, no! Uh oh, TJ! Oh, no. oh, no, hold on. Lord TJ, please save me. I think that's the cue. Uh, I'm, yeah, they're taking away my shots. shots, and so. <laughs> that's your cue to show off. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not even going to make it through this, am I? Wait, no! Hopefully, Edible Toaster will patch the game one day so it doesn't use 100% of your CPU just to play the game and ruin your battery. Goodbye. Oh! <laughs> okay. The whole, uh, I think your whole failure might be imminent. Yeah, and they said goodbye. Ooh. Oh. So, yeah, that was our first playthrough, too. Uh, that was Controyce. Controis, and you guys can play that and be a lot better than me at it, please. <laughs> Hopefully you can find the secret of the DX thing. The, the Link's Awakening DX. That is actually what you get from Controis at the end. They tell you the secret of Link's Awakening DX. And a free copy of the game. Wow, TJ! That's, uh, this game promises a lot. He's... No, that's not actually what happens. Um, Alright, so I've got... Another game coming up. DJ's like frustratedly running around like, I gotta switch scenes. It. I, I gotta water. do this. It's gonna happen. Um, so this next game that we have is called Icebound. And Icebound is a steampunk fantasy visual novel and puzzle game that takes place in a frozen world in the depths of an ice age where alchemists possess supernatural powers. Ooh. Yeah, visual novels, which we haven't seen any today. Or uh, this week, which makes me super excited, because that is my jam. Oh, let me hit your volume again. Thanks, YouTube. Real pals. I need to flirt with that Metal Yeti guy. I need to flirt with that guy. It's a visual novel, right? Hope I get a flirt with everyone. No, uh, but really, there's uh, the cool mix that just works so well between uh, going through your visual novel and then also solving a puzzle. Um, get that mix of 
story that's paste that's specifically designed to be paced by a little bit of play like oh here we go let's yeah what was that board game that was being played towards the end yeah i want to go back to that i want to just put that on the the freeze because it looked really cool so uh yeah this looks like some kind of uh board game style thing but also kind of like a maze and you've got a bunch of different pieces that do different things um, or maybe fit in place certain ways. There's some cool stuff going on here. And so if they put this underneath a much larger story universe kind of thing in the frozen wastelands of magic land, uh, there's some cool stuff going on here that looks really, really cool. Hmm. TJ says it probably tells you what it is if you actually. Yeah, you realize you oh, can't okay. play the game by clicking on the YouTube page, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's not an interactive video. It's no, not an no, annotation over every piece. It's technology that we're working on. To watch on the next video, YouTube. click this piece and see what happens. <laughs> cool. So you actually are playing, you're performing alchemy by playing a table game. That's kind of whack. Uh, hmm. If you go follow along with history of alchemy, uh, you get into Norse traditions. And we've seen Norse themes come up through the uh, couple of last couple days of this whole thing because it's a big theme. It um, has a really big thing with Norse mythology. Norse apparently. mythology. I That's mean, I mean, really cool apparently, stuff apparently I'm behind because I don't. But I mean, like you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but with uh, within Norse mythology, all through all of the sagas, uh, they're always playing table games, um, and they're just straight up board games where it's like let's beat each other up. Um, and they're usually tile-based, and it kind of looks like that in some ways. Uh, so I'm wondering if there's some similarities between those things, what with frozen wastelands being Norse in a lot of in a lot of mythology and other things. Um, but yeah. Um, so we've got uh, one more game before we're going to take a quick break, um, and I'm a huge fan of this game. This is actually something that I made sure to put in here myself. Um, huh? Oh, thank you. Thank you. TJ's giving me all the directorial notes. Um, Black Ice. My job, damn it. He's doing a great job as a director. Um, this is Black Ice. Black Ice is a hack and shoot. Uh, so I'm just going to show you this because it's going to blow your mind. So Super Duper GC is working on this game, Black Light, and Black Ice. Solon, come on. We're all uh, tired, okay? <laughs> We've been working for like six days nonstop. Um, right, but Black cool. Ice, straight up uh, cyberpunk, and you've got all the neon lights that are the buildings that you are hacking. You are hacking buildings and using those hacks to uh, better negotiate the world around you that is very hostile. There are spiders all around you trying to hurt you and kind of i guess kind of hack you too uh but so yeah here's but, what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a quick little reading of this game's description okay it's kind of interesting hit me tj <clears throat> black ice is a hack and shoot a cyberpunk first person shooter slash hack and slash rpg about hacking think borderlands meets tron the cyber world is procedurally generated the colors are neon the loot is randomized and the lasers are loud Black Ice is currently in beta with updates most Fridays. Done. All right. Nice. So that's a game that you can actually go uh, pick up now. It's it's ready, and it's one of those games that they are going to show you it often and update it constantly. Um, it's a game that's always getting new stuff put into it. So it's something that you can actually like be a part of 
while it's being developed and enjoy it over its multiple stages and iterations. Another quick thing, um, a note to Let's Players, Twitch people, and YouTubers of all types. If you'd like to make a video of Black Ice, please do. You don't need to ask permission. Just mention this website and the Twitter account in the description. Even if you give the game a bad review, even if you profit from the video, I'm not going to issue a DMCA takedown. Send me a <laughs> link when the video is up. I'd love to see it. So there you go. You are, you are officially safe from getting your content ID'd Woo! from Black Ice. Black so Ice. now I can tell you my actual feelings on this game. No. Yes, now you, now you can <laughs> slander it. You can just like slam it across the <laughs> post like incorrect videos that aren't even the game and be like, <laughs> this is terrible. Look at this shit. But Play Superman know. 64. This cyberpunk <laughs> game is garbage. <laughs> but yeah. This um, is Black Ice, the yeah. game? Bla literally, Black Ice, the game, all one word is their Twitter account. So mm -hmm. uh, if that looked interesting enough for you, throw, throw a follow their way. Yeah, uh, Philip. Royer is in uh, chat saying that more people should have messages for streamers and for LPers and YouTubers. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's so very helpful. refreshing when you hear that kind of stuff from indie developers. You guys talked about that yesterday, too, on the podcast. Indeed. And, uh, just, just for the record, uh, you can also um, do whatever you want with Joy Lancer videos. I'm just saying, you know, no. no oh, you're going to gonna regret no. that. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I'm going to get a whole bunch of slander now. Yep. This game looks like a Game Boy. What the fuck? You're not. You're not going to be able to <laughs> understand and represent Joy and Grace the same way after Beatus gets to it. <laughs> That's you're right. Like I can't. I'm I can't keep developing indie games. I can't keep developing this anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Oh. Uh. No, that's what we got, man. That's the show. <laughs> TJ's like trying to hustle me along. Um, well, I mean, we've got we've got like nine more minutes until it's four thirty. Oh, you want me to just? I'll just pull up another one. I yeah. can do that. I can just start. I've got I've got games coming out everywhere. Yeah, like whatever. Um, but for more, uh, one of the things that I really love is that the it's definitely influenced by Neuromancer, and me and that guy have talked about Neuromancer often, which is an amazing book. Uh, that was what The Matrix was based off of. Um, and it's that idea of being able to hack into the whole world and then after that the kind of fallout that happens in a in a world where you can just hack and replace and uh cut into everything um but oh uh black eyes also was a part of the warp door panel yesterday oh okay okay now he now tj's just straight up micromanaging is like no okay now i told you to pick a game now i told you to pick this game TJ, gotten, why I've Combat used Core? To it. I have, I'm going mad with power is the thing. Combat Core, tell me about this. Um, this is a game that was made by Micah Betts, Madman Z on Twitter, and it looks to be a four-player brawler. Um, we might actually be able to get copies of this and play this on the 16th live for people, which this game hasn't actually been tested super extensively live, but, you know, I'm going to stop talking so you can check it out. Holy crap. Whoa. That was Combat Core? Oh my gosh. That's right. Micah Impressive. Best, Madman Z on Twitter. Um, he has a Kickstarter for this game. Please go give it money. Mm -hmm. If you like Power Stone and Cyberpunk, perhaps you should donate some dollars. The game's right there, and it wants you to exist. We did see some interesting uh, customization aspects there. Yeah, no, you can customize uh, any character, it looks like. You can make them completely your own, uh, and it basically gives you all of the um, all the pieces 
that they were, would put it. You'd normally put these into like specific characters. They're just like, no, here's all of them. Have fun. Play play however you'd like uh, with whatever kind of combo setups you want to do. That's awesome. That's way cool. It's funny. It makes me think of... Uh, so you're doing that kind of 3D over the top. Uh, sorry, the angle is top down. Um, the 3D fighter in space. And the where that kind of has come from or developed over time is actually from like the Naruto franchise, if I remember right. Um, that they're the guys that do that kind of like four player uh, brawler from that angle. Um, that's the first thing I think of. I don't know if you know of any others that do that kind of thing, Vetus. Uh, none spring to mind, no. Yeah. The only comparison I could think of off the top of my head was Power Stone, which I yeah. mentioned earlier. But that and Power Stone too. Um, and so, oh, it's also got online. I just looked at that online oh. combat. Yeah, and uh, when it when it comes to games like that, especially, um, you don't you don't really see that kind of genre really getting taken in like Mm-mm. a bigger form. Like it's it's one of those niche genres that like. A game will come out for it, like maybe once every four years. But when it does come out, everybody plays it. You know. I wonder if you can build arenas too. Also, worth even though it's not an over-the-top game, um, there is also um, Anarchy Reigns by Platinum right. Games, that a uh, 16-player um, online multiplayer brawler that is really fun. Great soundtrack, in- incredibly fun to play online. Uh, the community is dead mm-hmm. right now. Of course, as you oh. can as you can imagine, but um, I've heard some word, and I know some people who have the game, and uh, that's that's something. If you're, it seems in like the kind that, of place that would actually have a nice revival scene. Yeah, if so they if ever had one. If you're interested in those kinds up. of games, you should definitely. That should be like a thing that you like rally your buddies to do because it's 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 one of those things where it's just like it's always fun to do. You know, yep. it's, it's not it's because yeah, those these kinds, kinds of, of games, brawlers, you can always kind of come back to them. Yeah, you can always come back to them. You don't have to be together. great at them. It's... You're like, you got combat core. I've got combat core. Why Wait, not play we it? all have combat core. Let's go. Let's go pick up a game. Exactly. Let's go do Use it. Use it to settle your personal disputes instead of actual violence. Yeah. Or if you're, you know, you could. Uh, I wasn't. I'm not gonna go there. Bad laundering money joke, huh? We have, time for <laughs> we have we have time for one more trailer. Do we have one more trailer? Yes. Yes, we, we have, have hundreds. Tra- we have hundreds, hundreds of trailers. trailers. We have one more trailer, at least. I'm sorry. It's a trailer for ND3 2015. Which yep, yep which is gonna happen at this point. It's woo. <laughs> DJ confirmed. Spoilers. Uh, all right, hit me up with this. Heck a bomb. This is a Tie Fighter. Uh, so we're doing some spaceship stuff. And you can download all these images in a zip file. Um. Cool. So we're looking at a space exploration game called Hecka Bomb, I would assume. Right on. Okay. What are you seeing, Beatus? I'm seeing spaceships, I planets. Agree. Yeah. Lots of Heck, a bomb. Actually, actually, um, if I remember correctly, because my email's not over here, but the person who submitted this, um, they gave like a little backstory of the game. And like while they were building it, they were just kind of like, you know what, this game needs more explosions. Hence the name Hecka Bomb. So I'm sure, as you can imagine, oh. it's all about explosions. So it's about explosions and not the critical reception of this game. <laughs> exactly. It's, good, it's, good, it's, good. Or maybe it's both. Who knows? I'm I'm pretty into Hope that not. kind of humor. You know, we we're <laughs> not pandering to the explosion crowd. We're doing this for ourselves. <laughs> the explosion crowd. Oh, good. There's an incoming warship, and it is incoming, and it is incoming, and it's there. I'm loving the art style, by the way. Very colorful. Yeah. yeah. Definitely pops out at you. The The heads-up display looks great, too. It's got that little slanted look. So, uh, there's no uh, doubt right that a warship is incoming. <laughs> it's right there. We got Ironicus is here. <laughs> See it. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, is, is Ironicus in here right now? Ironicus is sending a telegram to me right now, <laughs> telling me that he's here. <laughs> I, I'm getting word on the wire that Ironicus is here. <laughs> Ironicus, say hello. Hello. Ironicus. Yeah, what a scoop. Ironicus just came in the chair. <laughs> Ironicus, are you here? Yeah, I was just testing out some stuff and uh, uh, and it works. Yeah, you should have you could have done that in the green room, but you're hey, live w- on welcome, Indy 3. Welcome, General Ironicus. Nobody to Indy was 3. in 
Nobody was in the green room. I'm taking. I'm taking initiative. <laughs> Incoming, Ironicus. <laughs> Ironicus is ruining this whole thing. He's just jumping in and just going mad. He just hecka bombed her. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hecka bomb. Bite now. I'm, I'm a wild card. <laughs> but yeah. So tell me about this game we're looking at. Gosh. So we're looking at hecka bomb, and it's a long list of screenshots uh kind of old school let's play format only without text it's actually really good these pictures are really good at telling the story <laughs> it's like yeah you're in space your spaceship there's stuff to blow up and the stuff to blow up gets close to you and you blow it up like story done um but i don't have any information on where to find it further or grab more information on it um, but, I will post about it on uh, the Twitter at some point tonight. Please do. Please do. If we can definitely the Twitter for more. <laughs> Ironicus, Ironicus, are you, you taking Mike a shower you right bathroom, now? Please. <laughs> He's like taking a shower? <laughs> taking <laughs> us to the shower? <laughs> Incoming shower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, on that note, I think we're going to go. We're going to take a break. <laughs> Yeah, we're um, going to go into quick intermission. We're going ironically. into crisis mode right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're going into panic. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, we're about to go on a quick little intermission. Yep. So, um, and still, when we come still, back, um, the panel on. When we come back, Philip Royer is going to be with us. Yes, he will. And we're um, going to talk to him about his game. Yep. And um, on the Indie 4 channel right now, they're doing a panel on designing games with no budget. So if you're interested in That's that right. in any way, you should definitely check it out. Mm -hmm. The Indy 4. Indy 4 also is here. It's a sequel to Indy 3. Yep. Um, uh, Hitbox.tv slash Indy 4. We'll also post the link as usual. And yeah, go check that out and we'll be right back. See you guys. Later. <laughs> that awkward smile moment. <laughs> Thank you, Nintendo. I don't know. I don't know if I'm muted. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Houndstooth hype! We've got Houndstooth hype in the chat. Uh...